Hey, what's up, you guys? Stop, stop. What are you doing? <laughs> Uh, it's 2018 and I thought we'd introduce ourselves like everybody else seems to be introducing themselves on YouTube nowadays. Yeah, yeah, to be honest that's true, but no, Baz, only YouTube. Hey, what's up you in, guys? No, only YouTubes in the US introduce themselves like that. Oh, I thought everyone was doing that now. No, 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 we're British, so we need to be more reserved than More that. stiff upper lip. Yes. It, anyway, it, it is a rhetorical question, isn't it? You know, hey, what's up guys? It's asking the audience a question that they can't really respond to. So, oh, well, if you want to be like that about it, reserved is the way. Like this, hello and welcome to the retro shed. See, like that. You expect me to say that? Yes. I'll do it in a Roger Moore style. <laughs> <though. laughs> yes. Hello and welcome to the retro. No. <laughs> no. That's enough for that. <laughs> I suppose you've got a point, though. Yeah. I suppose a retro channel's never going to go down with that kids, then, is it? No. <laughs> anyway, this is uh, the first show no it's not actually the first show of 2018 because i did something the other day yes looking at um what was i looking at oh our type super r type but that was recorded uh, over christmas so this is the first in front of the camera yeah live 2018 show so happy new year you guys oh and uh God. hope you had a good massive christ festival now we are definitely looking forward this year to some awesome retro gaming events yes Want to go to Manchester again? That was good. Yeah. Hopefully, Matt at Kapow is going to do something again this year as well because that was really good fun, actually. Um, now, yes, and where we are going to take our little channel this year. Interesting. Yeah. My chair is spinning again. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to start this chair for, as I'm talking to people. My chair kind of like does this. One day, right, I'm going to end up just looking at the wall. Oh, Hello, today. welcome to the retro shed. <laughs> Stop my chair from spinning. Oh, how professional. Right. Now, <laughs> a day or two before Christmas, yeah. um, I woke up to my phone bleeping a message and I was amazed that we'd won a prize. Um, although I don't recall us being entered for any competitions, we'd run up, we'd won a prize. Yeah. And absolutely. So we want to thank Mark and Joe and Maz, yeah, Gaming, Maz Gaming for our wonderful Streets of Rage 12 I know. How final. cool is that? This We'd is only just awesome. bought a record player as well. So that was yeah, perfect timing. Perfect timing. Can't wait to have a listen to this, actually. What a great game. Yeah. Streets of Rage. Good. Absolutely brilliant. So thanks, Joe. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, especially to Joe, yeah. for actually picking us out and I saying, oh, these guys stand out. I thought, yes. oh, that's wonderful. So thank yeah. you very much. It's nice to know that we stand out. Yeah. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, I, I think that's a good thing. <laughs> Hopefully for good reasons. Yeah, stand so out. thank you very much, Joe. We yeah. really appreciate that. And that is just fabulous. Love it to bits. Now, uh, some of you might be wondering what on earth has happened to Josh because he's not been around for a few weeks. He's not been a video now since November. Uh, oh, I think wow. he was in the Amiga... Mega Games Part 2 episode. Yes. Uh, now, Josh has unfortunately succumbed to the Vulcan ritual of Pond Far. What? 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 You don't Stop. know what Pond... What? You don't know what Pond Far is? No. Get out. Oh, no. Out. Okay. Out. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Isabel doesn't what? know what Pond Far is. No. Uh, Pond Far... Yeah. ...is the Vulcan ritual of coming of age. Oh. So, in Star Trek 3... Yeah. ...the search of Spock, they find Spock as a child. And he's rapidly aging because he's on the planet Genesis. Okay. Bear with us on this. <laughs> and as the planet ages, Spock ages with it. And he goes through teenage and puberty and goes through a lot of pain. And that's called Pon Far. Ah. Now, Josh is going through Pon Far. <laughs> and he's endowed, but he's not going through the same thing that Spock did. What Josh is going through is that he's decided that everything's just not fair. No. Um, and it's just too hard to tidy his room. <laughs> Never mind help me create a video. Um, so he's decided to have Strop and sit in front of his PS4 for probably another six years. Oh, with a least. face a bit like this. <laughs> it's too hard. Absolutely. So he's not left home or anything no, like that. No. Um, so he, you know, he will pop up from time to time here and there. Yeah. But for the time being, unfortunately, you guys <laughs> have got me. And me. So <laughs> <laughs> you do it on your own if you like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure we may see Josh again in the near future. Yeah, yeah. yeah so from time to time, once he realises there is actually more to life than PS4 and Fortnite. And Fortnite, yeah. Sorry about that, Josh. Yeah. I was taking the mickey out. I love you to bits, pal. <laughs> um, Josh has been an integral part of this channel since day one. And yeah. we've had such a great time. I think he's just going through a, a phase. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, 
I've got to have a rant. Oh no. I've got to have a rant warning. here. I've got to have a rant. Rant warning. <laughs> warning. Um, one of my favourite gaming companies of all time, since I was really small, yeah. um, is the great Konami. Well, no, the once great Konami. Mm, They've done nothing today. recently. Nothing recently. No. Now, growing up, Konami uh, were one of my favourite arcade machine manufacturers, and they brought me my favourite shoot 'em up of all time. Uh, the Gradius, Radius, uh, Radius, Gradius, <laughs> Nemesis, Salamander range of games that were fabulous. Nice. They brought us games like Time Pilot, Gyrus, Castlevania oh, series, Castlevania. Scramble in the arcades, Hypersports, Frogger Turtles. I could go on. Yeah. Now, last October, mm. we did a video looking at one of my favourite arcade games, or arcade shooters of all time, yeah. which is of course Salamander. Now, shortly after creating this video and putting it on YouTube. We got a copyright violation notice, right? So check this out. Oh, Konami filed a copyright violation against me playing a 30 something year old video game. So not even a new game? No. Just... We were looking at Salamander yeah. and YouTube said copyright, and I was like, what? For what? It's a bit odd. And looking at it, it's just because I was playing a game. An old retro game. Konami. I'm going to be careful what in I say here. Way in possible. the nicest possible way, you yeah. have seriously gone down in my estimations. Mm -hmm. Understand something, Konami, right? Your customer base, your fan base, is made up of people that love and loved the games that you created. Yeah. Your job, your solid purpose in life, is to make gamers want to play your games and yeah. to like you as a company. You are not doing a good job. Not anymore. You're acting like a bunch of spoiled bloody children, right? What and is the just point? because a retro gamer like me that used to love your company, yeah. that used to love your games, I am not going to touch your stuff with a barge pole. No. Right? So You can stick your games with a sun don't shine as far yeah. as I'm concerned. I still love your games, but I'm not going to I'm not going to focus on anything by command no, because what's you the are point? you're doing yourselves an injustice. And if that's your aim in life, is just to annoy retro gamers. Yeah. Um, and if you want to get really precious about a game that's what thirty something year old, thirty something years old. Yeah. So you know, if you if you want to uh, enforce copyright violation on looking at an old retro game, well, do you know what? That. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my bye. mouth shut now. Yes. <laughs> bye, Konami. Stick bye. it. Bye bye. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Oh. Right now, I've got that off my chest. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, breathe. Okay. Oh, that annoyed me. I'm not surprised. Really, really annoyed me. Yeah. Uh, anyway, move <laughs> on. Right, cast your mind back. Mm -hmm. Okay, late 80s, early 90s, and when you think of some of the best racing games of all time, yeah. I'm pretty sure classics such as Outrun, Super Sprint, pretty Road good. Blasters, mm -hmm. Chase HQ, stuff like that comes to mind, and we had a good decade of some of the best racing games in history. Yeah. Uh, but we were now in early 90s, mid 90s, we were heading into an era of the realms of 3D hardware. Mm. Today we are going to be taking a look at the three of the most influential and best racers ever to grace our home tellies uh, on the little grey PlayStation 1. Now even on the 16-bit uh, machines of the time such as the Amiga and the ST and stuff like that, mm. we, start, we started to see a shift towards more 3D based games such as Indy 500, uh, Jeff Crammon's 3D stunt car racer which is brilliant fun, um, and test drive and things oh, like that. So. Drive. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. In 1994, the first of the fifth generation of consoles hit the market, and we were treated to some really great home versions of Sega Rally. I love Sega Rally. Virtual Racer, Daytona USA on the Sega Saturn. Yeah. And finally, the market had shifted from the old sprite-based racers, and things are never going to be the same again at this point. Nope. nope. Now, in 1994, the awesome PlayStation 1 was released. It was, yeah. Awesome. Groundbreaking. Yep. And this was also designed to be a 3D based machine from the ground up. Mm. And of course, it needed its killer app and it certainly got it. And that was in the form of Nanko's Ridge, Ridge Racer. Racer. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Ridge Racer had launched in the arcades in 1993 yeah. and debuted Namco System 22 arcade board. Now, the System 22 board featured texture mapping, real time rendering, transparency effects, lighting effects, death queuing, depth queuing, not death queuing. Not death queuing. It's a bit morbid. Yeah, death queuing. <laughs> 
what would you do? Yeah, you'd be killing people lining up to play your game. Yeah, that's not going to go down well. No. Depth <laughs> queuing. You can get my words out there. And it made for an absolutely perfect system for 3D racing games. Arcade Ridge Racer was classed as the most realistic racer in the world mm. it, they'd ever seen, basically. And there was even a full scale Ridge Racer. Rid, Ridge Racer? Ridge. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Beaner strikes again. <laughs> Curse that Ribena. <laughs> People think we're all alcoholics in here at this rate. Uh, Ridge Racer Machine launch that featured a real Mazda MX-5. Yeah, Unos Roadster. Yep. Yeah, yeah. In front of a huge curved front projection it screen. It was, yeah, yeah. Um, you'll certainly never forget if you ever saw a Plates machine because it was, it was yeah. immense. It was, yeah. It was I think immense. the first time I saw when I was dragged into... Um, an arcade in Western Supermare by Carl James. Hi, Carl. You all right, mate? I remember that day. Uh, dragged me in. He says, you've got to look at this, Barry. And there was um, there was a, a, a red, full-size Mazda MX-5 nice. with three like cinema screens in front of it. And I was like, what? That was the arcade game. It was a full-size car in front of some cinema screens. Um, it was actually the perfect game to launch Sony's new console, and it looked and played brilliantly on the PlayStation, actually. It yes. became an instant classic and was responsible for PlayStations flying off the shelves. Uh, it even allowed you to play Galaxians while it launched, if you can believe that. Yeah. It was probably the most significant and memorable racing game ever to be launched on a home console. Ever. Ever. I reckon. Ever? Yeah, that's, I reckon. That's a bold statement. It is. Yeah. Well, actually, did you know that a Ridge Racer game has debuted with almost every PlayStation apart from the PS4? I think it has, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. so it was aimed squarely at Sega's Daytona USA, it was, and yeah. both games are brilliant, yeah, let's be are, honest. Yeah. Ridge Racer had the looks, the speed, and handling of its arcade Big Brother, mm -hmm. and it's a brilliant game to play even today, really, isn't it? Is, it is, yeah, it's a really good game, actually. Um, so 3D Racers had indeed arrived in our homes. And it was fabulous, yeah. absolutely fabulous. So to see what all the fuss is about, let's have a look at Ridge Racer yeah. on the PlayStation 1. Three, Ridge Racer on the two, PlayStation 1. One, now, go. don't forget, you've oh. only got left and right. You've got no <laughs> oh, analog yeah, stick. No, um, oh, gosh, okay. Isabel's playing anyway. No, one thing about this game, do you know what it reminds me? What? How bad music was in the 90s. <laughs> I mean, what? just listen to this. This is awesome music. Oh dear. Ooh. It's like it's funky, ravey dance ravey. house music from the 90s, which was most of it really <laughs> bad, apart from the Prodigy and stuff like that. Yeah, Prodigy kind of kept yeah. it going, really. It's very, um, what's the word? Oh, sorry. No, I shouldn't be saying sorry. It's very really twitchy, isn't it? Yeah. It's very twitchy, and the mechanics are really not realistic at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really, it's really arcadey. And when I first saw this, I thought, wow. Oh. This actually was the best racer I'd seen, I think, on consoles at this point. So you'd got the 3DO yeah. and the Saturn. And I don't think I saw anything that really impressed me on either of those consoles. Well, no, no, I'll tell oh, a lie. Okay. Hang on, I'll take that back. Yeah. Uh, Sega Rally, very good on the Saturn. Oh, uh, yes. Daytona Sega USA, Rally, yeah. very good on the Saturn. But I've got to admit, when I saw this, that was it. I thought the visuals were smoother and sharper on this, yeah, and I thought, wow, that is sort of powerful little grey box, actually. It's um, not very realistic, the fact that if you crash into a cliff, you just bounce off it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you can, I think you can literally go sideways round. I, earlier on when I was practicing this, Woo! I went sideways for about <laughs> 10 seconds, I thought, no. Totally realistic. Ooh, I like this. This is fun. Are the commentators really irritating as well? Oh. Hang on, we've not given him a chance to speak. Oh him. no. Where is he? He's being really quiet, actually. Let's not be doing what is it with helicopters in racing games? They have, to, they have to watch. Is that what it is? I think so. Plus, they look cool. You can't say much, can you? Because you can't control I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, yeah. So when are you when are you doing your driving? Are you doing driving lessons, are you? Soon? Yes. <laughs> Starting the end of January. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this should be interesting. Yeah, watch out, people. <laughs> I'll be on the roads. The roads of Worcestershire. <laughs> oh, that was good. Right. So, Rich Racer, what do you think? I I really liked it. It's good. Isn't it? I actually did. Yeah, yeah, I did really like it. I just for the age of it, 
it's just incredible what they did with it and yeah. how much it kept my very interest. Very smooth, very fast yeah. as well, actually. Yeah, Not really and good. it didn't matter to me so much that it was just a D-pad no. and there wasn't no That's analog. right, yeah, it was before, that's right, good point, before yeah. the analogue sticks, actually. Did so, I tell you I'm really, really annoyed with Konami? Uh, no. I did, no, I'm no. sure I did. Anyway, yeah. moving on. <laughs> a year later, in 1995, a racing game appeared that really changed everything again. Yeah. Because the first one changed everything, but this one changed but this everything one, again. Yeah, did it again. And suddenly made console gaming hip and happening. Now, the game was designed by one of my favourite Amiga publisher developers of the late 80s and early 90s, based yep. in Liverpool. Um, they were Psygnosis, by the way. And the game was, of course, the amazing Wipeout. Ah, Wipeout. Yeah. Set in 2051. Yeah, it so was, not yeah. not that far away. Yeah, in Dudley. In the oh, home, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wipeout didn't feature cars as such, but anti-gravity craft yeah. that are taking part in the F3 600 anti-gravity racing league. Apparently. Apparently. You pilot one of a selection of craft taking part in races on ever-increasingly difficult tracks. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it was difficult for me. <laughs> <laughs> and in true Mario Kart style, you can also pick up weapons as well to check yeah, at your racing opponents. Yeah, to sling at people. Yeah. <laughs> the races, this, this is why I don't follow Formula 1. Sorry, Jason, one of my mates are really badly into Formula 1. <laughs> I just find it too dull. They go round yeah. and they go round no and round and round. No there's bananas. No, yeah, there's no, you know. Yeah, there's no clouds coming down no. and firing lightning or anything. <laughs> Making like that. you really small. Could happen. It could. Could happen. <laughs> there are four different teams to race for in uh, Wipeout, and each team has two different craft to choose from. Yeah. Which, as you'd expect, they have slightly different attributes, speed, handling, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. There are a total of seven tracks in the game, and some of them are an absolute mare to navigate around. There's also a hidden track on Mars. Ooh. I heard that. That there That's was a hidden track cool. on Mars, yeah. That's unlocked once you complete the uh, the other tracks in the game. So I'd never see Mars then. <laughs> now, one of the developers was quoted as saying inspiration for Wipeout came from Mario Kart. Mm, you can so, see that though, can't you? Yeah, you can pretty see much more than any other single game. The game took about 14 months to complete by a team of around 10 people, and they were under a lot of pressure to get the game completed. 14 months? Yeah. As opposed to Gran Turismo, which took five, five years. years. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's right. <laughs> Wipeout is much more than just a game, actually. It was literally a marketing machine, and it was the first game responsible for making gaming cool and socially acceptable again. Because gaming, okay. I suppose, up until that point was a bit antisocial. Yeah. Yeah. The, the reason behind this was the fact that the design, artwork, music, and the look and feel of the game were all aimed at club-going, fashionable, <laughs> music-buying audiences. Now the game had a thumping good soundtrack yeah. featuring Left Field, The Chemical Brothers and Orbital. Nice. Uh, and the look of the design of the game and the marketing materials handled by a company called The Designers Republic based in Sheffield. See, a beta version of the game was used in the 1995 movie Hackers. Oh god, I remember that. Yeah, yeah Hackers, in which yeah. The, the game was played in nightclub. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. the PS1 was seen as a cool console yeah. to own all of a sudden and the viral marketing consisting of the PlayStation button shapes appearing in unlikely places. Yes. Plus the SAPS Do you remember the SAPS commercial? No, yeah. you probably don't actually. You're probably too I, old for I the SAPS I vaguely remember one of them. Yeah. Hello, citizens of Europe. As spokesperson for SAPS, the Society Against PlayStation, I'd like to talk to you about a menace threatening humanity. It's happening right here in our very homes and corrupting the lives of our loved ones. Yes, friends, I'm talking about this. Yeah, Wipeout is widely accepted as synonymous with the success of the PlayStation, a bit like Ridge Racer, really. And yeah. we are going to take a look at it right now and see how bad we really are. <laughs> Wipeout and the Designers Republic had a huge hand in what this game looked like. Check this out for an intro. This blew me away when I first saw it. It's really good. They remind me of the robots from The Black Hole. Have you ever seen the film The Black Hole? Walt Disney's film The Black Hole. No. They look like Vincent. You'll see. I'll put Let's a graphic on now. the screen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they look like Vincent. Now we're used to stuff like this now. We're used to game visuals looking like this, but back in 1995, this was... when I first saw this, yeah. I thought, oh, mother of God. <laughs> oh, that is pretty cool. It is really cool. Yeah. Obviously this is all pre-rendered stuff, but back then it was just like, whoa, look at that. And it looks better on a CRT screen. We're watching it as usual on an LCD. <laughs> which Not doesn't any have justice. Yeah, it doesn't have the same look and feel of a, of a cloud. I had it on an old Sony 28 inch widescreen, I think, which CRT, which was so heavy it nearly fell through the floorboards of the living room. Look at that, brilliant. Awesome. Nice pre-rendered intro. I like that. 
Oh dear. Okay. Let's go. X. I think it's X. Yeah, yeah it's, it's X. X. Yeah, X. Yeah. And again, it's digital controls. I don't think the analog controls were supported. I think okay. you can change your view by pressing triangle if you want to see it outside. There you go. Oh, yeah, you can. <laughs> Oh, you can spin. Oh, different no. sections of the track do oh, different no. things, so I think some speeds you up, some slow you down. Yeah. Okay. So, oh yeah, hitting the blue things. Oh, it's very um sensitive. Where's the rest of them? Oh, there they are. I'm way. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to say, but I'm. I thought way you was on your behind. own then. <laughs> oh. He's got a shield on him. Look. Oh no! I'm going off the track. So, I wonder if I can boost. Do I want to boost? I can't even drive Just it anyway. Just the Oh, you have got a weapon. Oh, it's a oh. missile. You had a missile. Oh. <laughs> there you go. Shows you that icon shows you what missile, what weapon you've got. Oh, okay. certain, A certain colours speed you up, some slow you down. Oh, no. Am I warping? Oh, I keep pressing on... <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not sure about this one. I don't know what... Do you know <laughs> what? It's probably been 20 years since I played this game, so I can't really be of much help as do... I think I'm beyond help with this one. Oh, you got a shield. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Oh, I thought I was going quicker. It's very stylish, isn't it? Yeah. The design of it and look at the fonts it's and very all that fancy. stuff. Yeah. And this was played in clubs and What? Yeah, this was played in nightclubs this game was. Oh um, dear, I flipped. And it was just cool. It introduced <laughs> a load of cool hip happening teenagers to PlayStation. And it wasn't all about being a geek. No. <laughs> well, it was, but it was in the cool way. Yeah, yeah, like geeks are now. Geeks are cool now. Oh, yeah. Just look at... Um, New fashion. Oh, God. What's it called? Stranger Things? Yeah. They're geeks, but they're cool. Yeah. Being a geek is cool. When I was at school, being a geek was like, yes. whoa, you don't want to be a geek. No. Oh, but dear. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not helping, because it just makes me crash. So you're eighth? Is that last? Yeah, it's last. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Failed to... Dudley? Qualify. <laughs> God almighty. <laughs> Failed to <laughs> Dudley. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll leave that one there, shall we? <laughs> Failed to Dudley. <laughs> Two years later, we were treated to another milestone. Oh, were we just? Game. Yeah. Ooh. But yep. uh, for the PlayStation, it took over five years to develop. It did. That yeah. is a long time. So they must have started developing this before the PlayStation 1 existed? Which is... Yeah. Mm, yeah. Mind you. Yeah. Mm. I can see why, though. Yeah. I mean, it went on to become the best-selling PlayStation game of all time. Yeah. Um, selling over 10.8 million copies worldwide. Yeah. That is incredible. Yeah. Uh, the game we are looking at next is, of course, the quite brilliant Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo, yeah. Now, yeah. I thought it was the best-selling racing game of all time on the PS1, but no, actually, it is the best-selling game, full stop, Wow. on the PlayStation. 10.8 million copies. <laughs> Just think about that. Not only but this game happens to be the highest rated racing game, but yeah. the highest rated well, game. Yeah, game of all time. Actually, many publications consider this game to be the finest racing game of all time to date. Wow. So what on earth was all the fuss about? It's more of a racing simulation, really, than an all-out arcade racer, like Ridge Racer. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a true comparison, but GT does have two main modes of play. Mm. So you've got arcade mode, and then you've got simulation mode. Yeah, yeah. Um, in arcade mode, you can literally select any car and track and go and race. Yeah, just go and thrash around, can't you? Yeah, 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 so nice and simple. However, in simulation mode, you have to earn different driving oh, licenses God, yeah. to qualify yes. certain races. And don't, don't you? we remember the fun of doing that? Yes, you have to get around a course in a certain time, and you have yeah. to do a slalom in a certain time. And in simulation mode, actually, you start off with a little bit of money and end up buying a bit of a clapped-out nail, like a <laughs> Nissan Micra or something like that. <laughs> winning races means winning money, and in some cases, new cars you get offered. So, winning money means that you can do the whole Halfords thing <laughs> uh, and buy upgrades and other lots of junk to make your course even. Cleaner and quicker than it is, like putting stripes on it and stuff. Oh, like. go faster stripes. Exactly, yeah. 
<laughs> once you've chaved up your Corsa, yeah. more wins equals more money, which equals more cars. Yeah. So it's just a win-win situation. Yeah. With a Corsa. <laughs> With a Corsa. You don't hear that every day, do you? <laughs> <laughs> the game features over 140 cars from all sorts of manufacturers and 11 tracks to go and play on. Mm. Two awesome Honda NSXs, that's were also available in the Japanese version. Yeah. They were later removed from the North American and European versions. Yeah. Why? Why? Why do they do that? They're awesome cars. Why? I love the uh, Honda um, NSX. You'd much rather have an NSX than a Chevrolet. Well, yeah, as the East, at least the NSXs can go around corners. Whereas yeah. the Chevrolet, ugh. No. Anyway, let's leave it there. Game designer Kazunori Yamauchi said the game took so long to create, he thought he'd never see the end of the project. Aww. As a result, he actually feels that the sound design of the game is not brilliant, mm. and he was never very happy with the AI of the other cars, so they kind of like just bounce around the track and the sound. The cars sound like wasps in jam jars. They're not, you know, really beefy, nice sounding no. cars. But on the whole... It was still... Brilliant game. You know, yeah. yeah. The game was created in-house by mm. a Sony development team, called Polys Entertainment. That's right, they were, yeah. Who in 1998 were renamed Polyphony Digital. Yeah, po- Polyphony, 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 Polyphony Digital. Polyphon. Mm. The game uses approximately 75% of the PS1's power, and it mm, shows, It does it? indeed, it really does. It yeah. looked amazing when it was first released, and was the first game that utilised a new Sony DualShock controller. Yeah. That was only on sale in Japan at this point. Uh, and do you have a story about that? Don't I do you? have a story about that yeah. actually. So sitting comfortably. I oh, am. Yeah. I do. Now <laughs> at this point, Sony had released the dual analog controller in the UK market, but it didn't have. It had the dual thumbsticks, but it mm. didn't have the vibration feedback called DualShock. Yeah. It was just called the dual analog controller. I think you could only buy the uh, the DualShock in Far East markets, Japan, and places like that. And they weren't even sure they were going to release the DualShock in the UK at all. Oh. Just the dual analog sticks actually. Um, so one day I was wandering around uh, a market in Bangkok, like you do in Thailand, yeah. and there was a, they love their games out in the Far East. Mm. And I was in a market looking at a gaming store, and there on a shelf was a box that said Dual Shock. And I was just like, "What? Oh my <laughs> God! Can you pass me that box down, please?" <laughs> in Thai, and he understood what I said, so he gave me the box, opened it up, and lo and behold, it weighed a lot heavier than a standard Sony uh, controller. And I thought, "Oh, that's a Dual Shock." And my girlfriend at the time was like, yeah, whatever, come on. Like, no, 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 this is a jewel shop. You don't I have understand. no idea what this means to me. She was like, hungry, come on. I'm like, I've got to buy this. And I was expecting to have to fork out about 100 quid for this thing. And I mm. said to her, oh, how much is that? And it turned out to be something like 20 quid. Wow. And I just looked at it and went, mine. I have that. So I paid my 20 pounds or whatever it was, a couple of thousand baht. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to come home immediately and cut the, the holiday short there and then just to come <laughs> just over to and, play. and play it. Yeah. <laughs> so we got home, plugged it in, and I managed to pick up a copy of the Japanese version of Gran Turismo, nice. and the thing vibrated in my hands for the first <laughs> time. I thought, wow, this is the future of gaming, having controllers that give you some sort of yeah. uh, force feedback. Um, and I wrote to PlayStation Magazine, actually, mm. uh, to talk about this, and the letter got, I think it got Star Letter? Oh, they got nice. Star Letter and they sent me a copy of Adobe Photoshop Elements for my trouble. Ah. So there's my story, anyway. Wow. So, do you know what I'm going to say now? Yes. Let's, Let's look take at a look. Game. <laughs> Cars look like real cars for the first time. You could recognise. Yeah, you can see it's actually a car. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. And the first time I played this, and the controller jolted in my hand when something hit me. <laughs> I was like, oh wow, this <laughs> is the fu- this is the future of gaming. I can't drive a toffee. <laughs> I'm not going to drive in games. I think you are. You came first in the Ridge Racer. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, the. Well, oh. Everyone is just shoving me out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> but at least in this one, it's a little bit more realistic. Oh, yeah. They, they spent a lot of time on the handling of the cars in this. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing the developers weren't happy about was the sound. Okay. They didn't have time to really focus on the car engine sounds. Um, I mean, after five years of development, yeah, they wanted the game out there. Not surprised. This is the best-selling game on the PlayStation ever, I think. Wow. Or is it the best racing game? I don't know. Yeah, Get out of it. Move. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Be how does he overtake you like that? Oh, but like the lighting this. effects with the lampposts yeah. and everything just on look superb. And it's not easy, these cars are tough. And you've got a drifting effect as well, so you're tucking behind them and then you can overtake them. Second Yay. place, I'm not That's happy not with bad. that. You're not? <clears throat> no. No? Only first. You can have a go. But <laughs> Okay. Well, what I love about it is the replay. Just look at the camera angles on this. It's reflections and everything, oh, isn't yeah. it? The cars look so really, really detail. good. Oh, it feels weird now using them. Yeah. Um... You've got external view if you want to see the car. It's Right, Izzy's go. Uh, this is trial mounting course. I love this course actually. Yes, yeah, it's quite pretty. Oh, so he's using brakes, so I just tend to drift <laughs> and go on the grass. Oh no, brake! Oh, yeah. I don't know, don't use it. <laughs> Do you? I think it's. Oh, yeah, it's circle. Okay. Well, you found the brakes. <laughs> Good safety tip. Yeah. Better than not crossing the streams actually. <laughs> oh, this car is very quick. It's a quick car actually, I've always liked it. Yeah. It's not it wasn't called the Fair Lady over here. I can't remember what they call it now. Hmm. I like this course as well. It's good, isn't it? Oh, come on. Speed. Big corner Whoa. coming up. Big corner coming up. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Meant to do that. And you've got rear view mirror as well, oh. I forgot about the rear view mirror look. Oh yeah, if I tend to look in that, I don't look in front <laughs> and then I crash. So, for now. Oh, I can definitely see why people love this it's game. It's great, so, I yeah. love it. I think there's some cheating going on here. It's just that corner, I say it's just that corner, it's every corner. But, well, you're right. Sick. How many cars in the race? Uh, 20. Was it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, I thought it was six. <laughs> I think it's six. <laughs> you say you're not good at racing games. <laughs> oh, nicely done. Thank you. Yay! Right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go on that course. But I love that course. Let's <laughs> have a go. Yeah. So there you go, that was a look at three of the most influential racing games on the PlayStation. So we've got Ridge Racer, yep. we've got Wipeout, and we've got mm -hmm. Gran Turismo. Now, yep. Here's the biggie. Here's the biggie. Which is my favourite. What was your favourite? What do you like? What do you don't like? Um, I'd say Wipeout was my least favourite. Okay. I, just, I can understand why. Yeah. I just found it very difficult to control. Um, I didn't hear much sound from it either. No, it's quiet, isn't it? It's very it's quiet. quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd say Wipeout. I mean, don't get me wrong. The good points about it were it was really colourful. I could see they obviously put a lot of effort into it. Yeah. And it was different. It wasn't just a car game. It was, you yeah. know, the first kind of flying. And it looks really stylish yeah. as well. Visually um, and, and the music is so stylish. You can yeah. see why it, it really, um, you know, it took the market. But I agree yeah. with you. I think, I think the handling... On Wipeout 2 was better. Okay. It was tighter for some reason. It was a nicer game to play. Yeah. Uh, but on Wipeout 1, I was never particularly bowled over by the handling of the. I was going to say car. They're not cars, are they? No. They're just like craft. Um, yeah. They felt woolly. Yeah, does it just that makes sense. Like yeah, really they, controlling yeah it. but I totally appreciate what the game yeah. is about, and it, it does look absolutely superb. Yes. So, what do you think of Ridge Racer? Oh, I love Ridge Racer. It's good, isn't it? I really liked mm. it. Yeah, for the first time playing that properly. Like I said, you know, it didn't really bother me that there was no analog and it was just D-pad because yeah. it just felt like I could still control the car. It came the out before the dual shock, the, the dual analog sticks came out, so you yeah. just had left and right, and yeah. it is as twitchy as hell. Yeah, it really is twitchy, <laughs> isn't it? You know, you press left and you're like, oh, I'm in a oh, wall. That's it, high cliff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but apart from that, I I do think it was really good game. Isn't it I fast? Just, it's really it really really quick. goes long at it a fast pace. Drag. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and you can just keep playing it for a while. I could have easily carried on playing that. Yeah. It was a very, very influential game, and yeah. I'm so glad we got a copy of it. And another thing, actually, the music is so bad on it, you can actually take the game disc out while you're playing, put a music CD in, 
and it will play. Wow. Yeah, because that, that's what yeah. we used to do. Back in the day <laughs> when we used to play it at my old house, we used to put a music CD in. Yeah. Um, and it would stream the music from your CD whilst so it didn't need it doesn't need to access the disc while it's running. That's pretty cool. So it'll just play audio tracks from a CD, which is great because the music is oh Dear. See, we, we have to agree to disagree on that one. I love the music on that one. It was very get up and go. It was like, yes, you're racing. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> Encourage me to win. Kids. Anyway. Um, right, GT. Gran Turismo. Yeah, Gran Turismo. It was the graphics It's a feast the visuals, for the eyes. Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah. You cannot... I don't think I could score that high enough. For the age of the game, that was just incredible. It was really yeah. It was a, an absolute visual feast, yeah. And the, the controller, the force field, not the force feedback. That's not wrong. The the dual shock um, handling the cars, the look of the cars. Yeah. Okay, the AI is nasty. Then it does sound like a wasp in a jam jar. But <laughs> skipping over that. Yeah, skipping over that. Yeah. It was jaw droppingly good. It was really really good, and I think to this day it still stands up really really well. I'd say so. So, what's your favourite out of the three then? I'm going to have to say Ridge Racer. Ridge Racer? Yeah. Okay. I know Gran Turismo is the best selling game. Yeah. And I did like it, but Ridge Racer. I didn't got expect my you heart. to say that, actually. I thought you'd say Gran Turismo. I'm going to go with Gran Turismo. Yeah. Um, I love Ridge Racer. I could see me getting bored with that um, quite quickly. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Whereas Gran Turismo is, especially with simulation mode, you've got months and months and months of playing there. That's it true. It's got really, a lot of really gameplay. Really, really is good. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hope yeah, you liked that you. look at uh, three awesome racing games on the PS1. And we'll I see you did. soon yeah. where we will be talking about, I don't know. Once again, once great Once again, game. we'll be talking about once again. <laughs> <laughs> starting to like this game. <laughs>